video now. No, I'm just doing some uh, like B-roll shots. So we do your podcast first. No money, no problems. My blog is all about your Benjamin. Yes, sir. It's a bad boy connection. So uh -huh. let me reach out. I, I think I reached out to you initially. Was like, hey, I like what you're doing. Let's meet. I think is how I remember it. Yeah, yeah. No, I because this was this was in the middle of the pandemic. So this was uh, probably like June. This is like June, July of 2020. Like, what's your first memory when it comes to music? I did grow up in a Nigerian family, so. You know, within our culture, music, dancing is just really within ourselves. I would say it's within our DNA. But I remember my uncle, my Uncle Aydin, he would always pick up me and my siblings from school. He was always listening to like rap, hip hop and R&B. And this is like back in the 106 and Park days. So I feel like one that probably says a lot of, you know, the reason why I love DJing R&B music probably more than anything else. Um, but yeah, that was like my first introduction into music. And when did that when did that introduction turn into a love of music maybe and like when did you start DJing or what like what was your first kind of like bringing music into your life beyond just listening to it I would say it probably started with my oldest brother because my oldest brother was really into rap like he loved a lot of like battle rap so whenever we were at home and I think I don't know if this is more so of just like a cultural thing or if this was just a Houston thing but we would always freestyle. Like if we were like playing basketball, if we we're outside in the park, like playing football, like we would just always freestyle. That's the way that we would hang out. Check me out, uh, yeah. I might blow, yeah, I might go. Pronounce the name, it's Odaro, not Odaro. The flow make you cold, make you shiver. Freestyling, make it touch your liver. Man, I'm rapping sicker than the other dude. Man, I've been rapping since the other dudes. Back in the lunchroom in middle school. And like any other dude, like you don't want to be bad in front of your friends. So something that I worked on, like I'll try to get better at rapping. So really in fifth grade, I remember I started rapping with friends and that transition to middle school. And then my, I remember my oldest brother telling me, he's like, hey, when you go to high school, you got to chill out with that rapping stuff. <laughs> he was like, you got to chill out with that rapping stuff. So I remember I kind of like let it go. And then that just progressed to picking up the guitar in, uh, in college. And then finally, Whenever I went to uh, a party in uh, college, I remember there's this guy. I hope I'm, I hope he sees this. I hope DJ Guwap sees this. But I remember uh, I was a lot of friends. I was friends with a lot of the DJs around campus, and specifically uh, DJ Guwap and DJ Spoon. They were killing it on our campus. And I remember it was a party. It was the Icebreaker Party, and this was summer 2016. Chance the Rapper just dropped his Coloring Book album, and I remember DJ Guwap. Uh, he dropped uh, No Problems. Oh my gosh, Justin, I was about to pass out. It was one of the dopest experiences of my life. And I wanted to be able to feel that same feeling as a DJ being able to control a room. So in 2019, I picked up a board and Spoon taught me how to do it. And there was other DJs who just kind of, you know, that I reached out to and they gave me advice. And yeah, it's been fun ever since. What's that feeling like when you're controlling the crowd? I think the best way I can explain it, like there have been times where I've been DJing. <laughs> there have been times that I've been DJing and I'm gonna use a basketball term to, to, to help like this make sense. You know, like whenever you see that thing in great basketball players' eyes like Jordan, like in the fourth quarter, you just see, he just knows that there's nothing that's gonna stop him. Like he's gonna have his way. And there's been times where I've been DJing and I've just hit some mixes and I feel like I'm in control of these people's lives. So it's just like, it's this floating experience almost. So I would say it's almost euphoric. Like I I, I live or I genuinely um, like hope for that experience all the time. Cause it's so fun. Like being able to um, put something together and you see that expression on people's faces or whenever you hit the mix that they wasn't, they weren't expecting. They're like, oh, my. like I just love it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a floating experience, I guess you can say. And how have you been able to manage keeping this passion of DJing and music in your life while you have a budding career as a up and coming financial advisor? That's a fair, that's a really fair question. Uh, yeah. So, well, two part one with DJing, it's, 
you know, I don't DJ un <laughs> unless it's like after 5 p.m. So it's like most events um, aren't calling for my time unless it's after work hours. Um, and DJing, it's, it's really not that time consuming or I guess you can say it's not that um, exerting of energy because most days I usually DJ at home by myself. So um, if it's like going to a bar or going to a club, it's I just pick up my board and I pick up my laptop and I just plug in and I DJ. I do what I was already going to do at home. There's just people there. Um, but then additionally, I would say it's actually in a lot of ways benefited my career. Like I've, you know, used it to help me network, um, you know, DJing at Jolt Conference. And I'm now now that I know it's official, I'll be DJing at Future Proof. So it's it's helped me get into rooms that I would not have been able to get into otherwise. So even if I never DJ at another conference again, it would have been worth it um, in and of itself. So. If you could have your way, pick your number of income that you need to make. You could only do it through one form. You could be a financial advisor Ooh. and make the income that you need for your generational wealth, or you could only be a DJ and make the same number. Which one are you picking? Oh, Justin, that's so hard. Ah, uh, I, I, I would, I, I would still say I would love to be an advisor. The only reason why, the only reason why I say that is because. Um, I, I told the guy who taught me how to DJ, I said, even if I never DJ another day in public, I would be okay because I, I genuinely love DJing by myself. Like, so even if I didn't, and I don't like being a financial advisor just by myself. <laughs> so if I had to choose, I would say just because I know that I enjoy DJing in and of itself, like if there were not people around and if I didn't get paid for it, um, but being an advisor, I feel like I can see myself doing that at 45 and 50 with children as a comparison to DJing. Thinking of individuals who might watch this and have a passion of theirs that they haven't pursued or they haven't given more time, what advice would you give to somebody who has something like DJing or whatever it may be that they have a calling to do, but they haven't they haven't pursued it? What would you tell them? Ooh, man, a few things. One, I would say have fair expectations um, because a lot of people that have like, you know, I feel like it's easy whenever you start dabbling into things like you just want to get to that moment where, you know, you're the next, I don't know, like the next DJ Guwap or the next DJ Spoon or the next DJ Dar, like, you know, but it's like that takes time and it took a lot of effort to get there. So it's like enjoy the process is probably all that I'm getting at. And then second, I think you already pointed to this, but it's like make sure that it's a passion, because as I said, like if it if DJing were a job to me or if DJing were a task to me, I would have stopped a long time ago. You know, um, I just do it because I love it. And because I love it, sometimes I've been willing to lose money on it. I mean, it's made me more money than I've lost or put into it. Um, so I would just say, yeah, just make sure it's your passion and just do it for fun. Do it from the joy of your heart, just the same way as kids. Like, I mean, I know we all wanted to go to the NBA, but we just loved playing basketball as kids. Like it was a fun way to hang out with friends and it was a joy. We loved watching Kobe. Like he looked like an artist on the court. Like. Those were things that we genuinely love and we just did it. And I feel like the same way uh, we can apply that to our lives once we become adults. And I'm probably rambling at this point, but I even I feel like that's that's probably been one of the biggest joys of adulthood for me. It's like I finally, you know, have hobbies again, because um, once I left like high school is almost this this like weird connotation of, you know, since I wasn't an athlete anymore, I wasn't going to go to college and play sports. It's almost like I just let all my passions go. And I just thought that I was going to be this like court, like this, uh, this person that was put into this box and I was just okay with it because that's what I was told. But it was like, no, like you can still do things that are fun as an adult, you know, like it's, you, you can really still have passions in life and it, man, it brings so much freedom in life to my life. You know, like even if I have a stressful day at work, I can, you know, take a break and for my lunch break, I DJ and it helps so much, you know, so I don't know, I can ramble about this because I'm really passionate. So I, I would say that people should find, you know, those passions and if you can monetize it, then do, but don't go into it with that expectation. Hey, straight up now, tell me, do you really want to love me forever? Oh, oh, oh.